broke down in 2017 and and it was um by then i had had fibromyalgia for 12 years and fibromyalgia is a pain syndrome which is very very real but actually there's no physical reason for the pain which is bonkers so for people that don't know so you might wake up in the morning the, the, my family used to laugh oh what's the disease of the day today Jules you like that yeah whatever um so my leg might hurt so the way that your body works is if you hurt your leg that action will send a message to your brain to say leg hurts you need to deal with that. Well, my brain was misfiring and telling lots of different parts of my body that it hurt when there was no physical reason for it. Now, there's no treatment for that. So the doctors will prescribe opiate pain medication, which for me is bonkers. Now that I know about it, it's blooming bonkers. Um, because how can you treat a pain that isn't there? Although it's real. It's really, really confusing. So I hit a wall in 2017. Um... And the last time I went to the doctors was for palpitations because my anxiety was so bad and I could literally feel my heart bouncing out of my chest. Now, what I needed then was counselling, talking therapy. What I got was beta blockers. And I remember sitting in my mum's garden. I'd had this really bad anxiety. I'd had all my meds, uh, shuffled around like an old nana. And I'd take my beta blockers. And I literally sat there and I could feel my body shutting down. And I thought, holy moly. I didn't think that. I thought, shit, I'm dying, is what I thought. And my mum was really frightened, so she'd phoned my husband and he came to get me and I slept for two days. And when I woke up and I realised I wasn't dead, it was a winner, but I did think that was my turning point. That was the day that I said, no more, I'm taking back control of my body because this isn't serving me, this isn't working for me at all. And that was the day that I said enough and, I, and that was the day that I started to learn about how my body worked um, what was going wrong why it was going wrong how I could help myself and I basically created um, I went from being classified as disabled to being bloody belting literally within five six months I was a different person you know my kids were going oh mum's out of bed mum are you are you going to be able to join us with this Stuff that they'd got used to me not doing. You know, walking up the stairs was exhausting for me some days. And I'd gone from that to, in three and a half months, I'd got rid of everything. Apart from the steroids, I'd got rid of everything. And the steroids, you have to wean off slowly. And I have to say, I didn't do it with, uh, I don't advocate it. I didn't do it with a doctor's help because by then I'd, I'd had it up to here with, with that response. So I, I replaced everything with natural alternatives and I started off nourishing my body and learning about my cells and how my body was made up of trillions of them and that each one needed to be nourished and that's what I did and then um, so that led me down a real path of learning and I've literally gone from strength to strength but each of those parts of those learnings one was really liberating and empowering but two really pissed me off because the system only supports a medicated response. And I just felt that women need to know, or people need to know, that there are there is an alternative way. And as society has um, developed, we've looked for shortcuts. We've looked for quick fixes. We want to be faster. We want to be happier. We want to be thinner. We want to be all these things, but we don't want to do any work for them. We just want to take a quick tablet or whatever. Um, and all of those come with extra chemicals and those chemicals are knocking our bodies out of kilter. And it's no surprise to me that our cancer rates and um, our chronic illness rates are going through the roof. There are 15 million people in the UK currently living with a chronic health condition. And that's a health condition for which there is no cure. Um, and again, that doesn't surprise me. And in the talk that I did at Be Inspired, there was a room full of about 80 people. And I asked the question, who here actually knows someone, it is someone that was living with a chronic health condition and every single hand went up. Now we accept that as normal. That is just not normal. We shouldn't be living like that. We shouldn't. So, so the toolkit that I have has kind of evolved over time. So I became a qualified aromatherapist because essential oils were a massive part of my healing journey. Um, so I became an aromatherapist, I became a body healing coach, I qualified in diet and nutrition, I I even did past life regression work, I am a, um, what else am I? 
I'm a corporate wellness um, coach. I am a life coach. I'd, I use a fantastic modality called belief coding, which again works with the subconscious brain, but can really help remap that belief system so that and deal with trapped and unresolved trauma. Because the other thing that I'm really massively interested in is metaphysical effect on your body. And the fact that stuff that we don't deal with in our life is stored in our body. And that's what I honestly believe fibromyalgia is. It's trapped trauma. And when my fibromyalgia was triggered was back in 2007... 2006 2007 and it was a car accident that triggered it is it usually triggered with some sort of trauma so some people get it after childbirth or a uh, bereavement something like that what belief coding allows me to do is work with people to address those traumas in the subconscious and re-imprint new beliefs for them so being able to do that is so so amazing it's life-changing and seeing ladies that are able to deal with the trauma some of them they don't even know they've got because it's stored in the subconscious but the subconscious will never lie um and to be able a trauma doesn't have to be something huge trauma can be something as small as the teacher telling you to be quiet but however that made you feel at the time is trapped trauma and the way that we live our life is that we just get on with it and that getting on with it um manifests in into your body i never felt good enough which is something that a lot of women a lot of people feel not good enough not heard not seen now i did the work and mine went back to age three and it was um my great grandma favored my sister who was 18 months older than me and i don't remember this consciously this is in the subconscious so my sister was sat on my great grandma's knee having a story and I was trying to climb up on the other knee because I wanted to be on part of that story and I was pushed off. <clears throat> so I wasn't good enough to, to the stuff for the story. I wasn't good enough to be heard or to be listened to. I wasn't good enough to be there. Now that incident didn't lead to all the trauma in my life. It didn't, but it was the catalyst. It was the thing that planted the seed in my brain in my three year old brain that I wasn't quite good enough. And so that then drove me to display certain behaviours that made sure that I was seen to be good enough. OK, and then when I look back now and I think, God, so why did I put up with that boyfriend for so long? Because I was bloody lucky to have him, wasn't I? Because I wouldn't be good enough for somebody else. Again, why did I work myself into the ground to get that? Because I needed to be seen to be good enough. I needed to win that award. I needed to be the top of the pile and I'd work myself into the ground to do it. So they didn't cause that that three year old Jules, that was that little trauma was little to most people, led to certain behaviours in my life. Now not until you're forty seven and you realise that, that was all a load of bollocks. But you could you then start to make sense of Ah, that's why I did that. Had I had I felt good enough, my life would have taken a different turn. But now that I know I'm bloody good enough, I'm belting. At four, so I can do anything. So for me, what drives me now is I don't want women to be 47 before they realise that they're bloody belting. They're bloody belting now. We just need to unlearn that shit. And to have the power and the skills to help women do that is just incredible. And this is what I tell my ladies is that no matter how you feel now, you're not going to feel the same way. But you have to move. And the universe moves for the woman that moves first. No one's going to come and do it for you. So, yes, Jules, crack on. Keep going. Keep doing. Start believing. Keep listening to yourself. Keep learning. And you will come out the other end. That's what I can say to myself. And, yeah, and, I, and that's exactly what I'd say to other people. But you, you have to make the move. You have to make the change. No one's going to do it for you. When you ask me what am I most proud of, what some people will say is, oh, I've published a book and I've done this and I've done that and the other. But actually taking it back to basics, there are two things that I'm really proud of. One of my kids, because I, I believe that I've, I've created two beautiful humans and I have learnt, granted, 
one of them was 17 and one of them was 12 when I hit the wall. But I realised that I've taught them stuff that they that doesn't serve them. So I've been able to turn that around and re-educate, which I think is massively important. And the other thing that I'm really proud of is, is pulling my socks up and really doing the work and realising that we've got one life and doing something about it. <laughs> so at my lowest, I was literally sitting in my conservatory rocking. <laughs> um, I couldn't take my kids to school. I'd had to phone my mum. Well, I didn't phone my mum because I couldn't pick up the phone. I literally just sat. It was almost like catatonic. And thinking about it now just makes me oof, shiver. I don't recognise that woman. But I love her. She's been through a lot. And, um, and she's come out the other side. And she's learnt her lessons. And she's healed. And the person I am now is... A testament to the girl that was rocking in the conservatory because she did something about it.